high. So we finished the most basic formulation of the Riccardi model. What we're going to do now is to discuss two possible extensions of this model. And actually, let's more like to have a glimpse of what would change if we uh, made things a little bit more complicated. Okay, the first extension we're going to uh, discuss here is what if you would have more goods in this model. And look, if we would have more goods, uh, the, 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 actually the model, uh, comparative advantage model with more goods, was actually developed by Don Bosch, Fischer, and Samuelson in 1977 in, the, in their paper about model with continuum of goods. And actually, it describes a pretty straightforward uh, uh, prediction of what would happen then. Okay, look, imagine that we have two countries, A and B. And let's just say that this country has N sectors, capital N, producing, each sector producing a different good. Like, let's just say that I'm going to index those sectors by I. So this is good in a country one, and a good one, good two, good three, and so forth, and so some good N, for this N, and then, and then, until, so finally good N. And look, let's assume that those goods were ordered based on the comparative advantage of country A over country B. So here, country A is the biggest comparative advantage, here is the second biggest, third, and so forth. Here is uh, here is the uh, here is the good in which country A is the lowest comparative advantage. But look, this means if I would look from perspective of country B, we would be going in the opposite direction. Here, country B has the greatest uh, comparative advantage, the less and less and less. And now, look, within this set. Of course, here we have declining comparative advantage of A, here we have declining comparative advantage of B. Or here we have increasing comparative advantage of B, and here we have increasing comparative advantage of A. Look, in this setting, what I can do is I can find some good. Line on this continuum, good XM. It will divide those two into two groups. But those goods will be exported of this will be exports of country A, or it will be exports, I'm sorry, imports of B. And similarly.
Okay, and this one, let's do an example of a case with just four countries. So, let's just say, now again, we have chemicals here and food. And now, we have some individual production possibility frontiers. First, we've got some country A, and we see that this country probably is going to have a very big competitive advantage in chemicals. Well, here is country D, which in this circumstance will definitely have comparative advantage in food. But let's also say that we have two more countries. We've got country a country like B. Now, what will D 
decide how much we produce. This we get from the ratio of prices. And look, at this point, the ratio of two prices is given by uh, P uh, 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 P C0 over P F0. How much is remember that this is like at this point it's tangent and what does it do? Look, if this is the ratio of prices of of uh, chemicals to uh, food, it means that this ratio is somewhere between this angle and this angle. So this ratio must be somewhere here, in between those two. And look, what does it imply? It imply it implies that with this ratio of international prices, only the country A would be uh, only the country A uh, would be uh, producing uh, would be producing chemicals, while other three countries would be just producing food. But no, look, this. What happens if either price of chemicals go up or, or end price of food go down? Look, if price of chemical goes up, this becomes bigger, right? Or if price of food goes down, this whole thing becomes bigger. And but because it has minus in front, it means that this line will be getting steeper and steeper and steeper. And let's just say that it has become so steep that we ended up in here and now we have some negative PC1 over PF1. Look, it can, could have happened because of two things, as we said, either international price of chemicals went up or international price of food went down, which, of course, we can assume is beyond the control of the countries and it depends on the war demand and supply of these two goods. And now look, what has what has this what, what has this cost? Look, internationally is now more profitable to produce uh, 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 to produce chemicals. So what happens is that now one, two, three countries specialize in chemicals and produce chemicals while only the last country produces food and exchanges it for chemicals. And of course, those countries are producing chemicals and exchanging it for food. So again, even though there is a distinction between the two, we can clearly see that if we know what happens in the model with two countries, we can easily extend our knowledge to the model.